Hello everybody. Next off the pile are four Stanley number 74 bullnose rabbit planes. Let's take a look at them. Every workshop needs a Stanley number 74. They're a handy little rabbit plane. Here's a look at all four of them. The furthest one away was uh, made in England. There's one that's a sweetheart version here. There's a newer one. And the older 74's had a slotted screw like you see right there. Except this 74 has a replacement iron in it because it doesn't go with the older style. Here's a look at the other side. Noticeable Japaning loss on uh, the three closest ones. The Made in England one looks almost like new. And here's a look at their bottoms. It's important to note that the section of the sole that's ahead of the iron right there, it's adjustable. You can open and close the, the throat and it is not aligned with the back part of the sole. It was made that way purposely. So don't try to lap them down even. Let's break them down. So there they are. Four planes from four different eras, two different countries. So it's going to be easy to keep the Made in England part separate. They stick out. They've got the good Japaning. But the other three, a little more difficult. The second one in from the left, the base, that's the Stanley Sweetheart. It has no casting marks on the base or the upper part of the plane. Third one in is the oldest of the group. It has a B casting mark on, on both of the main plane parts, the base and the upper portion. And the one on the end here is the newest, probably same to era as the one made in England. On its base it has a number 189 cast into it. And on the underside of the top it has a 188 and a half cast into it. Figure that one out. And while at a glance the caps look identical, they're not. The uh, one made in England, the design is slightly different. That's the one on the left. The second one in is a sweetheart. It has no casting marks. And these recesses right here are slightly deeper than the ones on the made in England cap. The next one in is the oldest one of the bunch. It has an S casting mark on the back, so that's going to make it easy to, to keep separate. There's a look at the casting mark. And then finally is the newest of the bunch. It also has a 189 cast into the back. It looks like a 139, but if you get the light just right, you can see that that was originally a 189. So that's how I'm going to keep all the parts separate. The irons are really simple. The Made in England's got a, a unique trademark on it that none of the U.S. planes have ever had. Uh, Sweetheart, obvious, got the heart. The oldest one has a replacement iron. I'm going to look and see if I've got an older one. And then both of these are the same new iron trademarks. That's it. All the parts ready to start the cleanup. The tools for the cleanup of the Japan parts, simple green and a scrub brush. Deep sink and hot water. Now with the cleanup done, I've got a better idea of what I need to do with the Japaning. The uh, two newest ones, the bottoms on the left and the tops also on the left. Bottoms Japaning is good. I don't need to do anything to it. Uh, the top on the Made in England is good. The top on the other new one, I'm going to redo the Japaning. The older ones. Here's an interesting fact that you may or may not have already known. But Stanley didn't completely coat everything with Japaning back in the olden days. So those two on the right, the B casting and the sweetheart, this section of the plane right here was never japanned. And you can tell by the way, the way the original was applied where you can see it ran into this part, but it never coated this part. So the only thing they japanned was the, the very back that showed and not the front that was covered by, by the top of the plane body. So I'm going to... Um, not redo the oldest one with the B casting because it has most of its Japaning on the front, but I will redo the Sweetheart. Uh, you're going to see the same thing on the tops. You can see on the B casting on the right here, 
the japanning was never applied to that little bit in the back but the rest of it was coated so I'm not going to redo the japanning on the underside of the old B casting just the top it looks like the sweetheart had japanning throughout just just like this one here may have missed some spots but a lot of it's missing so I'm going to totally redo the japanning on the sweetheart top all of the caps are going to be redone except for the one there on the lower right the made in England so now it's time to remove the old japanning on the ones that have to be redone. I've scraped the paint off the caps, bases, and tops of the bodies, and they're ready for paint. So I've got to tape them off and get them in my paint booth. And here's a look at all the parts of my O Shucks approved paint booth with one coat of finish applied. Not going to tell you what I use. It's going to take probably about three coats at least, and we'll see what they look like. And I got my uh, high-speed exhaust fan going over there. It helps them dry faster. While the painted parts dry and get repeated coats, I'm going to turn two on the irons. The tools for that is uh, my lapping paper. There it is. Four sheets. Number 77 spray adhesive. Glues it down. That way you can pull them off and replace them. And uh, it's a combination of that paper and sandpaper on my rubber sanding block. That'll do the initial cleaning. I always do it with the original machine marks that are on those irons. The back side of these irons aren't machined, so the cleanup of those will be with uh, some uh, the foam sanding block and some steel wool. So the front side's cleaned up really good with just the 150 sand nut, sandpaper on my rubber block and finished it with 3000 grit on another rubber block. The back side used the sanding sponge and some steel wool and there's, there's a look at how they turned out. I've done the initial lapping on the leading edge right there. You want that back side to be perfectly flat. And here's a look at the underside. I've done several other videos on sharpening in the block planes. One video on sharpening by itself so I'm not going to go through the gory details on this one. Four coats have been applied with the first finish and final coat applied with the second finish. The bottoms, tops, and caps that required a new finish are done. I gave them a light sanding with some 3 aught steel wool and all four irons with a razor edge on them ready to go. There's a closer look at the back side of the irons and there's a look at the business side. The next thing I'm going to do is break out my dirty oil rag with its secret oil and I'm going to give all these uh, Japan or finished parts a uh, complete coating. While the oil soaks into the finishes, I'm going to clean up the small part. And my tools for the small parts are dental pick and sandpaper to get into the screw slots. And everything else gets done on the wire wheel. And now all of the small parts have been cleaned up and oiled. The next step is to wipe all the dirty oil and the oil off and put some wax on them, see how they look. And there they all are, oil's wiped off and everything's laid out. I've got the correct parts associated with the planes. The Made in England is up front and that's followed by the new Made in USA with its casting marks. It was a 188, not a 183 like I told you originally on the base. You can see it right there now, plain as day after it's cleaned up. 188 and a half on the on the top part. The sweetheart by its uh, trademark sweetheart label. No casting marks on either the bottom or top. Then the oldest one with the B casting marks on the bottom and the top, associated with each other with a replacement new iron, not the correct iron for that old B casting. All the caps are realigned with the plane they belong to and same with uh, the small parts. The biggest one key being is that uh, small screw with a slot was only used on the older planes. So there they all are. Finishes look great. Let's put them back together.
And there they are, four stunning Stanley number 75 bullnose rabbit planes. Let's get a good look at them all around. All four have got razor sharp irons. And these beautiful old planes are ready for a test drive. First up is the number 75 that was made in England. If you've never used one of these planes, you'll find out real quick that you want to have that throat closed as much as possible. Otherwise, it's a real pain in the butt to use. So, this one here, I've got this board, it's not level anymore because I've been experimenting with the planes. You'll find the throat will clog up really quick. If you're taking off full width shavings. You see it's definitely effective. Next one up is the modern made in USA. A little bit more aggressive shavings on this one. I also have the throat open a little bit wider. Like the two planes before it, this plane will cut. Last but not least is the old uh, V trademarked number 75. I've got the throat super tight and it works the best out of all three of them. I think it's because whoo, how tight that throat is. Ooh, that sounds like a chalkboard. See how the shavings want to build up in there. Doing a fine job. Singing to me. See, I'm quite happy with this one. This is my favorite out of the bunch. And this plane will cut. There they are. Pass the test, ready for a rest until somebody puts them back to work. Quite pleased with the number 75s. So the old 75s are done. I had fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, guess what? Today is the 3rd of June, which means the drawing for the number 3 is going to happen really quick. That will be the next video I do, and we're going to try something new. My daughter created a, a Facebook page for Second Chance Antique Tools. Yep, she gave the nod. And we're going to do it live. So the drawing will be live on Facebook. So everybody that's signed up for the number three drawing, go find that Second Chance Antique Tool Facebook page and we're going to do the drawing live. And I'll post that video on uh, YouTube also. So have fun. Time for supper. Bye.